Hello, we will call This is Ali Nassa, sitting here on a ferry heading out to Victoria Island uh, off the coast of Vancouver, British Columbia. <laughs> now, Vancouver was the, is the birthplace of BC Sealer where this uh, material was invented about 10 years ago. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to share with you some of the ways why ceramic sealer has evolved over the years, over the past 10 years, and how I currently use it clinically. Well, while we're here at the Bouchard Gardens right over here in British uh, Columbia, let's uh, take a quick look at this place while I'm going to tell you a little bit about our bioceramics and how we've changed this uh, system and technique. Let's take a look. In 2007, we here at Rebuildendo described a simple and efficient technique to maximize the biological benefits of this brand new class of obturation cements called bioceramic sealers. The very first such cement was called BC Sealer by Brassler USA. In fact, calling this cement a sealer is actually a little bit of a misnomer because this material actually is a filler that can also act as a sealer. Here, what I'm trying to say is that as a non-shrinkable, biocompatible, hydrophilic, antimicrobial, and non-resorbable permanent cement with some chemical bonding properties against dentin, this material could have actually been used entirely as a filler to fill the entire root canal without any gutta percha. However, because of Rebuildendo's dedication to responsible education, we wanted to make sure that we teach a technique that was easily retreatable with conventional means. And as a result, we made sure to include gutta percha as the main cone for easy retreatment. And this was the birth of hydraulic condensation. In hydraulic condensation, a root canal is milled to the shape of a matching gutta percha cone to achieve synchronicity. Now, this synchronicity of shape provides hydraulic forces that pushes the cement to fill in the gaps. Here, hydraulic condensation of bioceramic filler combined with the cement's excellent flow and hydrophilic properties allows filling of the lateral canals and fins without thermoplastic heating or excessive condensation of the gutta percha that's required in other techniques. Since this is a passive bonded obturation technique, we can also improve fracture resistance of the root by eliminating these excessive condensation forces. In hydraulic condensation, the gutta percha master cone is in fact a condenser and the bioceramic cement acts as both the filler as well as the sealer. And since the cement doesn't wash out or shrink, pooling of this cement in the canal is not a problem like previous generation of sealers such as ZOE or, uh, or resins. In fact, pooling of the bioceramic cement is in every way superior to the pooling of the thermoplastic heated gutta percha techniques, which shrinks upon cooling. This brings us to the second role of the main gutta percha cone or the master cone in this technique, which acts as a path for retreatment. Now, revision or retreatment is needed in any root canal where inadequate cleaning and shaping or recontamination of the root canal due to coronal leakage has taken place. Here, however, with the main cone filling about 90% of the canal volume, retreatment using conventional solvents is as easy as any other technique using lateral or vertical condensation. The hydraulic condensation technique is also very easy to learn. Basically, inject some of this premix sealer on a paper pad and pick it up and apply it all the way to the apex using either a master file or uh, some smaller size rotary or hand file. Coat the gutta percha and then after that and uh, seat your gutta percha slowly all the way to the apex, allowing time and room for the sealer to escape from around the size of the cones to complete the seating all the way to the fitted length. Verify complete seating of the cone to the full length and then proceed to sear off two millimeter above the root canal orifice. Follow by using a large plugger to spread the molten gutta percha to cover the orifice and cover any unset sealer around the cone. And voila, you're all done. Remove any remaining sealer from the chamber using ultrasonics and water. And make sure that you keep only contact with the dentinal walls with your ultrasonic tip so and not disturb the gutta percha in the canal. Now, I don't recommend injecting directly into the root canal anymore using the sealer unless you're an experienced user or have a microscope. 
Direct injection can risk putting either too much or too little sealer in the root canal because the dispensing tip is actually below the orifice and it's hidden from view. So just use the file to coat the canal walls and then coat the cone and cement the cone. That's all you need to do. Now, if you have a scope and also insist on injecting directly into the root canal, then only inject in the coronal half of the root canal and proceed to push the cement to the apex with the help of, again, a hand file or another rotary file. Clinically, I've been using this technique exclusively in my clinical practice here in downtown Boston over the past 10 years and have now completed and compiled over 7,000 documented cases. An independent five-year retrospective clinical survival study of 200 consecutive cases that I did in 2010 by one of my residents here at the school has now shown a five-year survival rate of a little bit above 97% in these cases, which demonstrates that this obturation technique is ready for prime time. Well, as this little quick visit to Bouchard Gardens comes to an end here, I just wanted to quickly review for you some of my experiences with the bi-ceramic sealer now that I've been using it for 10 years and in uh, nearly 10,000 patients. That study is gonna be published soon and I'm uh, looking forward to share that with you once it's available in its full detail. All right, for people to know, I'm and let's save some teeth.